Welcome your faces to a brand new video. Do you know what? Something about this today though with this headset, it just doesn't feel right for today's video. Let's see if I can just... There we go, that's better. I also don't need that now because I'm using a different microphone. Welcome to the room slash setup tour that everybody has been wanting. When I say everybody, it's uh, probably around about five people or so. I'll try and keep it as basic as I possibly can and I'll be using this little new toy to help me. Anything I go ahead and talk about, I'll leave a link down below in the description. They will be affiliated paid links. So if you were to go and purchase something, whether that be from my YouTube setup or the micro soldering stuff, I will get a little bit of kickback from that purchase. Right, let's uh, let's crack on. I'll show you first of all, I think it's really important that you see what I see. And this being exactly that. Move these out of the way. This is my current workstation. I'll try and keep it as realistic as I possibly can and give you the biggest field of view. I have my O1 XDM1041 multimeter here, power in here, and then I've got USB-B, which hooks up to the back of my desk just about here. This is a power bank of USBs, which connects to my PC, but has a separate five volt supply. I personally really, really, really like this multimeter. It has a few downsides, and um, one of them being that I need to actually turn it off when it's hooked up to the PC software, which I'll show you in a second, which is a minor drawback, but at the same time, what this delivers, which is the ability for me to be able to use it on OBS and show you on screen what exactly it is I have on the multimeter, that's a small price to pay in my opinion. I think the price for this was around about 130 pounds or so. I have here the trusty old, look at this. This thing has done me wonders. I can even see you in the dusty screen, so please please ignore that. Uh, this is the Andenstar AD407. This ring light was just a simple ring light that I purchased off Amazon as well. So it's got a separate switch back here and then I can control the brightness with a little wheel at the back of the ring light. Couple of screws to attach it to the actual microscope itself. This thing here is a 3D printed bracket from Roy and this hooks onto the microscope just here because the Anden Star, when you, when you take it out of the box, it actually comes with like a freestanding unit uh, which I just found wasn't big enough when I was working on motherboards like uh, games consoles, for example, Xbox One S, etc. So I've hooked it up to just a normal monitor stand, which hooks onto the underside of my desk here. And I can just have it extend as much as what I need it to. One of the downsides for this is that it does wobble quite a bit. So my desk, I've actually had to implement these things, which I bought from Amazon just as a bit of extra support so it doesn't wobble as much. But the scope still does wobble a little bit when I'm streaming or recording videos. So it's a little bit of a downside. Maybe a better shop shop could try and get my words right here shock absorbent monitor mount would do uh, a better job just to add as well the microscope is plugged into my pc that turns on the actual scope itself and then the way we focus it is by twisting this just like that don't quite need to see all the dirt but yeah and when i'm not using the microscope i like to just kind of swivel it around here and have it like that this is the station that i also game at so i've just got an rk i think it's an rk61 but i could be wrong royal clutch keyboard wireless of course because that helps when i'm streaming i can just move things about and have the room and this is a logitech g305 gaming mouse which again does the job absolutely perfectly fine it's the battery edition but it's actually quite nice because it adds a little bit of weight to the mouse which i like when i'm gaming now these things here right these are my lights that show down onto the desk. So when I'm recording my subject, whatever that might be, a, a bit of electronic equipment, I have one light over here and I have one light here. Now, fortunately, your boy's a little bit silly and these are battery powered. So I do need to charge these pretty much every single day, which is a little bit annoying. I've just purchased some more actually. So I've now got four batteries. So I've got two for backup. Nonetheless, again, very annoying because I just always have to have them plugged in and charging. There's the other two there. We'll come to the motherboards in a sec. I've got a solder wire holder here, which is fantastic. I've got two different types of solder, just a, a thicker and a thinner one. I believe they're both leaded, but this does the job. It's quite nifty, it's quite heavy. This is actually uh, from Hakko. I, I can't remember how much this was. Again, I'll put this back in the uh, in the description. But it's one of those things you don't really think about to be a really important piece of kit until you actually have it because it just takes away some of the mess. Quickly, whilst I'm here, so this is called DMM Easy Control, which is the software for the multimeter, and it communicates via COM port, COM port three, I press OK, and then it comes up with this little silly error message. And then if you give it two seconds, it loads up the readings that we have on the multimeter. But when I say I restart the multimeter, it's because now that I can't actually press, like when I go to press the buttons, nothing happens because it's frozen, which is uh, rather annoying. So inevitably what I need to do again is the, the turn off and turn on. It didn't do this originally. So I don't know if it's something to do with how much USB power it has because I plugged it in with all the rest of my USBs. So it might just be overloading a little bit, but now, I'll be able to change it. But overall, like I said, a really, really good piece of kit for what I need anyway. Coming over to our soldering irons. Yeah, I said irons, which I didn't expect it would be something that I'd be saying. 
Very lucky enough that my old boss from uh, Rocket Repairs actually gave me this Metcal soldering iron. It's an absolute beast. It uses a very, very thin tip, which is really good for stuff like going around ICs and just conf confirming that you've got enough solder on the pins. So I use that for the smaller jobs. I have got a spare tip for it as well. I don't actually think you can buy these units new. There is a newer version of them, but you can pick them up on eBay for relatively cheaper. And then of course we have the Hakko. The Hakko FX951 soldering iron. I've got a little ball of uh, copper wire down here, which I used to clean the tip. And if I can focus, yeah. So this, this tip I believe is a BC2. And then I've got a bunch of different tips here. I've got some more Hakko tips, but these are the ones I, I commonly use. And then that's my Atten, which fits in there nice and conveniently. But yeah, this is Big Bertha. And this is bigger Bertha. I don't really use too often to be honest, but yeah, I like my Hakko. Then I've got a Roxy DC power supply. It's 30 volts and five amps. This is what I use to inject power into devices and to see what's actually causing our issues that light up like a Christmas tree. A little bit complicated to actually use, but once you get used to it, really easy and simple. I don't think they sell these on Amazon anymore, but I'll find the closest alternative I can and just leave a link down below. Obviously the cotton buds, look at this. Probably the most essential tool that I have, or one of them at least. I've tried bamboo sticks, but they just don't do a good enough job. So the Johnson babies are just on a, on a refill sort of situation. Then we've got IPA. I use this little pipette, as they call it. I think that's what they call it, a pipette. Constantly refill this with uh, isopropyl alcohol. And the isopropyl alcohol I use is this bad boy stuff. Isopropyl alcohol, 99.9% .9 hexial. Moving on over to our bigger boy, Atten ST862D. I also really apologize about the dust. Things get dusty in here. Things get messy very, very quick because of the type of work that we're doing. But this, is amazing. I absolutely love my Atten ST862D. I've not had an issue with it so far. I've not even actually taken this off and I'm not going to, I'm going to leave it. But this is really my bread and butter when it comes to my heat gun. All right, now, now it gets a little bit messy, so please forgive me, but this is just bubble wrap. I have a lot of bubble wrap down here. I send a lot of parcels, so it's obviously good to have a backup lot of bubble wrap if I don't get any from receiving any parcels. And the same with this filler paper. This stuff is awesome. So whenever somebody sends me a load of this in boxes, when I buy stuff from eBay, I just keep it and I just put it in the side of my room. Yeah, it takes up a little bit of space, but it is what it is. Here I have three Nintendo Switches that are actually ready to be sold. And this is the latest addition to the room and it is gonna save my life in the three days of summer that we have here in the UK. This is an aircon unit, it's a challenge aircon unit. You basically stick that massive thing outside the window and this thing sucks all the hot air out of the room and blows it out of there. And then this just circulates the cold air, which is really, really nice. I have a, a messed up shelf, I'm gonna call it. I've been using cans of air recently, which I know isn't that great, but at the same time, it really comes in handy when we're trying to clear flux underneath the south bridges, etc. It does definitely come in handy. These are my Hakko Omni vices. Amazing, absolutely amazing pieces of kit. They are super, super heavy and you wouldn't expect it. They're for holding boards. So these are essentially my board holders now. Lots and lots of donor boards, PS5s, Xbox Series Xs, Xbox One Ss, Xbox One Xs, all sorts of bits and bobs down here. This is the graveyard. And up here, I actually have a working one and some Nintendo Switches that aren't working. As for over here, this is what I like to call my important shelf. I've got my toothbrushes. I've got my flux that I use, some scissors, pens, which obviously it's very, very organized as you can see. Uh, I use Super Wick. This is the best wick that I've personally used. Not had a single issue with this. Uh, some of the wire I've actually been sent, it's a, it's a combination of people sending me some stuff and me buying, but it's good to just get yourself some enameled coated wire and just make sure you tin the ends of it for when you're doing your work. I've got this little en engraving pen as well, which comes in really handy when you are doing trace work, which is something that I rarely do, but when I do, this comes in super handy. Our solder paste, now I've been using this, uh, sometimes very good, sometimes not. It's mechanic solder paste, but it does the job. I've still got quite a bit of Kingbo as well that I need to use up, Kingbo Flux. And down here in the secret, secret drawer, so you can't tell anyone about this drawer. We have some double-sided sticky tape, again, very, very important. We've got a UV mask, I think this is mechanic again. Yeah, it is mechanic UV mask. And of course, solder balls, very, very important. Different sizes of the solder balls when you're doing BGA repair work. Thermal paste, I like to use MX4 thermal paste, as you can see. Tweezers, the Ineasies. I was saying on stream the other day, like when you get a little bit ahead of the game, just sometimes buy things twice or three times because eventually when, you know, the end of the tweezers do snap or something like that, you've always got yourself a little nice backup. And I've done the exact same. Now this is, I think this was like 25 pounds for some super wick, but again, it's like, is it 30 meters? 15 meters worth of uh, worth of wick, which again, it will take me a year to get through that. Maybe, uh, do you know what? Maybe even longer. And again, just some super fine soldering wire down here. Another useless bag of stuff. Uh, this is essentially just filler and also some bubble wrap. So if I need to fill up my boxes, 
essentially I just come into here. This is also a, uh, a big part of the room. So firstly, let's talk about this. This is the frame that Tyler sent me. If you remember, I've talked about it. It's the Nintendo DS Lite frame. It's super, super, super cool. I love it. I've got a Joey Does Tech sign there. Gaming in progress, enter at your own risk. This sign, just as an FYI, was from my lovely wife for my birthday, amazing touch. We've got the headphones, because you know I like to wear headphones, as well as the fact the video recording. And then up here, Michael made me this sign. I absolutely love this sign. Let's get a nice gimbal rotation shot here. Yeah, absolutely love this sign. And then YouTube Gaming, that I went to an event and got, got that sticker. Uh, boxes as well. I obviously, again, I do a lot of sending, so I have to get myself quite a few boxes. Some random chips and other business in there. This is just an absolute mountain of, not useless stuff, it's very useful, but it's just parts and boxes. And I have my UV lamp here, which again comes in handy for the solder mask curing. I've got a tape gun, which is again, very handy for when I'm doing all my packages and stuff. Some random controllers. This is my Nintendo Switch light box, which is absolutely full to the brim. This is just leads upon leads upon leads, whether it be power or USB, uh, even, look, just some spare probes here for multimeters. And, oh, also, I do have in here a Fluke multimeter that I purchased, which is really, really, really good. But again, because of the multimeter that I have here and being on OBS, it makes it 10 times a better viewing experience for you watching. So I don't actually get to use this too often now, which is a shame. But again, I'll be keeping it because there will be a day where I do need it. I fix it stickers, lovely jubbly. Here's my door, by the way, that I constantly walk out of on stream. Down here, I've got a Kuwait's uh, electric screwdriver, which is, um, for me personally, it doesn't have enough torque to do anything. So I can't open PS5s or anything like that with this. So whilst it's a really nifty piece of kit, it's also not powerful enough, in my opinion. But shout out to Kuwait's for actually sending me this. Uh, we've got the Sabrent drive in here as well. So that's a cloning M.2 uh, device, which is really, really handy for when you need to try and fix an Xbox Series X because Microsoft decided to lock the SSD to the console. In this one, I've actually got my Dremel. Uh, again, comes in handy sometimes. The, well, the only time that it actually came in handy was when I had to file down Nintendo Switch Lite ports, but I don't do that anymore because I just buy the port separately. So I don't really have much use for this now. The Infrared P2 Pro thermal camera that I use is absolutely fantastic. It's not in the box, I just saw the box. Again, just a bunch of random stuff. I've got some disk drives and whatnot in here, and in the bottom is power supplies and more disk drives and all that good stuff. Now, you ready for this? The pan shot, the piston resistance, as they say. This thing has come in very, very handy. I put pretty much all of my little parts that I need in here, and it does the job. Example, SSDs, we've got stencils down here, PS5 HDMI ports, switch ports, all, all the good stuff. PS5 clamps, I don't know how many, you've got like, I'm gonna get this wrong, one, two, three, four, five, six, six times three, so you've got 18 small ones, 18 small ones down here, so what's that, 36? And then you've got six 12 big ones, six 12 big ones here as well, so 24 big ones. So it's a nice mix to have the smaller stuff for smaller components, like HDMI ports, but then the bigger ones for uh, your donor board. So here I have all my Nintendo Switches, Switch lights as well, and up here just some more Switch light stuff. Screws, some more iron tips I was talking about from the Hakko, more parts and batteries up here with some PS5 RAM. So actually this thing here is super useful. Again, I'll leave the link down below. But this is probably one of the more recent additions that I've done. Putting it up, however, laughable. A very, very laughable experience, but it is what it is. Down here, just like random stuff that I've actually not sorted out yet. Dettol wipes, like the handiest thing ever. My toolkit for iFixit. A Razer gaming mouse as well. My, my, my earbuds, my supply of earbuds. I've got some resistor books down here. This was the actual first like, bit of shelving that I bought for JDT, and this was, oh, okay, I'm just destroying things. This is where I've got all my Game Boy stuff that I started with the channel, so shoulder buttons, I've actually got some spare tweezers in here as well, hinges for Nintendo DS lights, I don't know if you can see, mics and antenna screws, so this is what I used to, I've got a drawer here called Leet for whatever reason, and it's just got a few screws in. I've got a test chassis here for the Nintendo Switch, two docking stations, three docking stations actually, if we look, some Carex, hand gel to be clean. Uh, my microfiber cloths, which are just, an, a, a, again, an essential, I've said essential a lot, but these are really essential. We've got some ports down here. These are actually micro USB. Again, just having a, an assortment of them comes in very, very handy. Mr. Bodger actually made me these. These are coasters with my logo, well, not logo, but the banner. So they're absolutely awesome. I keep this one in my room and use it for my coffees, etc. I've got some Nintendo Switches here that I plan on fixing. And then at the back, more so the actual YouTube setup. So here I've got a Canon SL3250D DSLR camera. Absolutely love this thing. We've got to zoom in, zoom out. This is what I use for the over the head shots. Now that is, as you can see, on the ceiling. All right, it's mounted on the ceiling. I did have something before, which was called like an overhead gear thing slider. And it just sat on my desk, but it was too much stuff 
to have around here. What's that? So that's, I mean, camera number one. And then you'll probably see that I have a second one, which is the face cam right here. And that is sat on top of an Elgato ring light, which obviously gives me some light in my face when I'm doing the recordings, which really helps. Behind that, I actually have some, um, some acoustic foam. So it helps with the sound because as you can see from the floor sort of situation we've got here, this really helps with the noise and all of that good stuff. I've got another sign there which says you are my sunshine. But this stuff, yeah, really, really good. This is a tripod that I don't use other than to just hold the light situation that I've got here. And again, remember I was saying about backup, so backup IPA. And then just to kind of go through this in a, in a quick way, I guess. We've got mini HDMI, which goes up and then down into the back of my PC. And this is a dummy battery. So this actually plugs into the mains and keeps the camera on all the time. So I'm not having to charge batteries. If only I'd learned my lesson with that and used it on the actual lights. But it's exactly the same situation for this one as well. But these cameras are absolutely awesome. These cameras have been a real godsend. Worth the investment, quite expensive, five to 600 pounds, I think, for the camera and the lens. But they've made my job a lot easier. This is where it gets interesting. This is actually underneath my desk and you might be thinking, Joe, why on earth are you showing us this? So I've actually got a box of gloves just there. You know I like to use my gloves. That is a PS5 that needs to be worked on. These are PS5s here that, uh, like I think, what's wrong with it actually? So waiting on Southbridge 69GG, yep, okay. And this one is 031 Wi-Fi IC replace. So there we go. So we've got a couple of those. I've got a little bit of a rat's nest behind my PC, but nothing massive or major. As you can see, not, not horrendous. Now this is really testing this device to be honest, because this is a really low light setting, but you can see that's my PC. So I've got an RTX uh, EVGA 2070. That is an absolute beast of a card. I have no reason to actually upgrade it. It does the job, it does everything it needs to do. I've got 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM, a 750 watt, course air power supply in there as well and then at the back I've actually got you're not going to be able to see but plugged in down here where you can see all of these HDMI cables they all plug into the Elgato Cam Link Pro which is how and you can see it there actually just about there Elgato where it says Elgato that's how I get everything to link up to OBS and record with my cameras and microscope and all that good stuff. Saying that, I'll, um, I'll show you an example real quick. So this is the mini, one of the mini HDMI leads that is linked up to that Elgato. And then what I'll do is I'll simply just plug that into my camera. Uh, when I say camera, I mean microscope. Turn that bad boy on. And then if I go to the scope scene, it's showing dark, but that's because the light's not on. So I'll just put the ring light on and there we go. So that's how I link everything up, you see. And I've got my different scenes on OBS. So we've got the overhead stuff, which you can obviously see, see like that. I've got the face scene, which is the camera at the front. Sometimes when I'm doing like a sponsored segment or something for the videos, I like to use this, which is a little bit more professional. I get that better rich quality when I'm doing the, the voiceover. And this is a Blue Yeti Pro. I've had this for, it must be seven, eight years or so. This is a label printer. It's a thermal one. And again, does the job. I'll show you the test one, ready? I'm gonna waste it. Look at that. Just like that, bosh. And then I'll just, oh, look at it. Absolutely incredible. This beautiful specimen here is my doge. Unfortunately, no longer with us, but fun fact, we went to a pet's corner in Winchester and she actually won first place in a doggy portrait, which is which is what this exactly is. But yeah, she was amazing. Border Collie. I almost actually forgot to show you this as well. So this is my fume extractor. It's Noves Big. They don't sell these on Amazon, so I can't put a link to it, but this is what I use as a fume extractor. We've got like the replacement, I want to say carbon filter, but could be completely wrong. It just basically takes the fumes out and disperses of them after filtering them. But I think I paid around about 50 pounds or so for this. This is where I keep all of my chips and it does the job. Mainly up here is a smaller compartment. This has saved my life on many occasion. It's called Boxel by Aidtech. I think there's hundreds of different makes out there, but this is the one that I use. And then what I would say is more like a, uh, a last but not least situation. I have just a few more Game Boy bits here. All of my Nintendo Switch parts. So for example, the back plates and stuff, it's just in these little boxes here. Below here, below all of this rubbish, is some more parts for Xbox One S's and power supplies and all that sort of thing. And I've just squeezed some cardboard boxes down there as well. That's probably about it. I don't think there's much more to, to show you if I'm being honest, but that pretty much covers everything. If I think of any, any more gear or anything like that, I'll obviously leave it in the description down below. I know that some people have been asking for this for a very long time, so apologies that I've not made it, but hopefully this will suffice and give you a little bit more of an insight to JDT behind the doors. It's a little bit of a small room, but you know what? It does the job. If you somewhat found this video helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and let me know your feedback on the quality of this camera. Did it do well? But as always, it's been a pleasure. I hope you have a great rest of your week slash weekend, and I will, of course, as always, see you in the next one. Peace.